Hey guys, welcome to the video, Salt here. Today we're going to be going over the primary weapon, the HEMA. Now in this weapon series, I take a weapon, I build it out, and I test that weapon on its own merits, meaning I don't mix it with any kind of external factors that would increase weapon performance. That would be things like Warframes using abilities, pets putting statuses on enemies, things like that. I just test the weapon built out by itself, and I let the viewer make their own intelligent conclusions about adding those external things. Uh, also, once in a while, uh, when we've done a, a weapon in the past, but maybe there's been a patch that have, that's changed a few mods or elements, or maybe um, I got really good feedback from people and that might have changed the build up, I'll redo one of my, my builds to uh, just to min-max it. And that's what we're doing with the HEMA today. So the last HEMA video was about eight months ago. And since then, we've had an element rework and we've gotten uh, a few new mods in the game as well. So I wanted to retouch the, the HEMA just to uh, min-max it. And we also had a suggestion um, from someone. So that's, that's what we're getting to here. So we're doing the HEMA and it was suggested to us to redo by commenter Prototype Mike. And that's why we're doing it today. We have the top commenter of the last video, Dean Ad Hiambo, and the first commenter of the last video, Hea Bellionis. All right, let's get into the heme here. All right, first I wanna go over um, interesting things about the HEMA. So the HEMA is going to start with innate viral, which is very, very powerful. Virals are like pretty much the best general element for low alpha damage weapons. This is a low alpha damage weapon. So like you would try to be, you, you would, if this didn't have innate viral, you would be putting viral on this weapon. Um, but it has innate viral, so that's awesome, and that lets us play around with some other elements. This weapon um, doesn't have an ammo pool. It actually uses your health as an ammo pool, so it's technically infinite. Kind of. Um, you know, of course, you can't, uh, you can't down yourself with it. <laughs> but, uh, so it's going to drain up to 5% of your HP to reload. And so this causes some self-damage, and there are some weird things and effects and mods in the game that can trigger when you take damage. So this is like a, a kind of like a weird niche way to trigger some of those effects. Headshots have 5% life steal. So you're going to be able to maybe steal some of that life back from reloading. Uh, you know, the amount of health that it takes from reloading is, is not very noticeable. It's only 5%, so it's not, not super noticeable. Now, the weapon does have really, really low crit chance, and it has average critical multiplier. So this is definitely not a crit weapon. Um, you could do some, like, weird janky things to increase uh, critical chance by adding things that add final critical chance, like a Darza Kavat. There's a uh, Warframe Arcane that adds final critical. I believe uh, Harrow adds final critical. There's a few things that add final critical. So, like, there, there are ways to get this thing to um, yellow or even orange crit, but... At the end of the day, it still has an average crit multiplier, so you would kind of be jumping through hoops just to have an average crit damage value. Uh, it might still be worth it. It's kind of up to you. Okay, I think that's everything with the um, unique and interesting things, and I think we can go over the mods now. So we'll start with Galvanized Chamber for multi-shot. Galvanized Aptitude is going to give a status chance and direct damage per status type effect in the target. Prime Shred is going to give us Fire Rate and Punch Through. Now, Prime Shred is going to be your best Fire Rate mod for this weapon because of the Punch Through. Um, however, it's a login reward, unfortunately. And that does kind of suck because it is very powerful. And so, if you don't have Prime Shred, you would use another mod called Vile Acceleration. Vile Acceleration is 90 Fire Rate, so you actually get more Fire Rate out of Vile Acceleration. You just don't get the 2.2 punch through, unfortunately, which, th which that does kind of suck. Uh, but, you know, if you don't have Prime Shred, at least you have Vile Acceleration, and at least you're shooting a little bit quicker, so it kind of compensates a bit for it. All right. In the next slot here, we're going to have Rifle Elementalist. This is going to be 90% status damage and plus 0 0.6 punch through. So you get a little tiny bit of punch through on here. So if you didn't have Prime Shred, at least you get a little tiny bit here. So it's not it's not too bad. Um, Rifle Elementalist is typically a weak mod to start, and then it becomes extremely powerful later on in the game. 
So, uh, you know, starting off, it's not really, it's like, it's probably almost at the same like level as Serration. But then as you start like going through the mission and your hours of time into a mission um, or closer to level cap, I guess not, not all mission types take hours to get to level cap. But if you're closer to level cap, Rifle Elementalist becomes extremely powerful. So like it, it has like a, a ramp up basically. And it's just because of the way uh, dots work, how long it takes dots to tick. A lot of enemies will die like either before a single dot ticks or like after one dot has ticked. So this gets more and more powerful when enemies are able to take more and more dot ticks. So as enemies level up and have, you know, higher armor values or higher, uh, you know, health pools and things, Rifle Elementalist uh, becomes more and more powerful. So, all right, enough about that. Let's uh, keep going here. So this whole bottom row is elements because this is going to be an, a status build. So this is going to be a white, a white non-crit status build. You will see some yellows 11% of the time, but most of the time it's going to be a white non-crit build. So we're going to go with corrosive and heat. So we're going to go with the 6060 toxin and the 6060 electric to make corrosive. And then we're going to go with thermite rounds as the 6060 for heat. And we're also going to add in Hellfire for more heat, just to increase the heat weighting a bit. Because Corrosive has a cap of 10. Viral has a cap of 10. Um, but heat can go, you can get as many heat procs as you want, as long as you, you continue to produce them. So it's always good to have heat be a little bit higher, or not a little bit. I mean, it's basically as higher as you can of the other elements. So as you see here, heat's a bit higher than the other ones, which is perfect. In the Exilus slot here, we're going to go with terminal velocity for projectile speed. This is going to increase our uh, bullets to be almost hit scan levels. They're not exactly hit scan, but they're almost hit scan. So that's why I like terminal velocity. And in the arcane, we're going to go with primary deadhead. Primary deadhead is going to give us 360% flat damage. And it's also going to give us negative 50% weapon recoil. Uh, the other option is to go with primary merciless here. Primary Merciless would also give you 360% flat damage, but instead of the weapon recoil, it's going to give you weapon reload. So you reload quicker with Merciless. The thing is, is this weapon does have uh, like a decent amount of recoil. So you want neg negative recoil somewhere. So if you do go with Primary Merciless instead of Deadhead, make sure in the Exilus slot you go with Stabilizer. Okay? So you either go Deadhead Velocity or you go Merciless Stabilizer. Uh, Merciless is a fine choice for the Exilus as well, especially if you're intending to do a few hours into a mission. Because if you're intending to like start going closer to level cap, or even just be in a mission for a few hours, uh, Merciless only requires kills. So like your dots can be killing, and Merciless will still stack. Primary Deadhead requires headshot kills. So headshot kills aren't hard to get, even on a heavy status and dot weapon. But the further you get into the game, you're going to be getting way more uh, dot kills than you are like actual weapon damage kills. And so I guess depending on what content you're doing, you could go with the Merciless route. You can go Primary Merciless and then just switch this one to Stabilizer. Alrighty, I think that is it for the mods. I want to go over some data I collected this morning because I wanted to do a lot of testing on the statuses here. Now, uh, for the the different runs I did, I only changed these four slots out. Okay, the, the status slots. So I did testing with corrosive heat, like I showed here. I did testing with gas and electric. I used both electric mods. And then I did testing with blast and electric. So let me go out of here and we'll go over the data. All right, go, go ahead and switch. Okay, this is the HEMA kill counts for five minute runs. This was done on Steel Path Void Mott. And we tested corrosive and heat first. So it got 376, 318, 396 kills for a total in three runs of 1,090 kills. Then we did gas and electric next. It got 375, 379, 355 for a total in three runs of 1,109 kills. And then we did blast and electric. 
and it got 328, 314, and 330 in three runs for a total of 972. So they were both, they were not both, they were all three very close to each other. Uh, this is very subjective. I, I try to play very mechanically. I try to pick tile sets that have like the exact same amount of entry points as like the other runs, like two to three entry points. I try to uh, do it. Um, but at the end of the day, there is still some ch subjectivity to it. I mean, it's just my gameplay. So if I was to redo these tests, we could have different numbers. So I don't necessarily look for small, like deviations. I look for large deviations of like a hundred or more. So like we could see that Blast and Electric was a hundred or more kill kills less than the other guys. So Blast and Electric was, was kind of poor compared to the other two. Um, Corrosive Heat and Gas and Electric, extremely close, like less than 20 kills apart, I think, right? Yeah. So extremely close to each other. Now, why did I choose Corrosive Heat if Gas and Electric like scored a bit better? It's because Corrosive and Heat is going to feel the same all the time. It's always going to feel the same. Gas and Electric is dependent on enemy density. All right. And when I do these tests, a lot of times I pick tile sets with two or three entry points, which you could argue like keeps enemies kind of tight. And so like this is on on like a I don't want to say best case scenario because the best case scenario would be like one entry point. But like two entry points is close to a best case scenario for gas and electric. And in a best case scenario, it barely beat out corrosive and heat. And there's going to be a lot of times where gas and electric is going to feel a lot worse than that best case scenario you know if you have really large tile sets where enemies are spread out gas and electric is going to feel much much worse corrosive and heat always feels the same it's not um aoe focused so while gas and electric has the most potential i'm sure if i did uh do it on a tile set that only had one entry point it would would have done way better than corrosive and heat uh it, it just has too many variables uh, for it so if it was beating corrosive and heat by a lot I maybe would have chose it, but it didn't. It was very, very close. So I'm going to go with the more consistent setup of Corrosive and Heat. All right, let me go back to the game here. All right, the other thing I wanted to test after I did that test, uh, and we kind of talked about it here, was this slot right here, Rifle Elementalist. Rifle Elementalist is uh, pretty weak to start. Like sometimes it's not even, if you're not intending to do level cap, it's sometimes not even worth putting on your, your build because it doesn't do much until you're much later into the game. Uh, but the thing is, with a status-heavy build, with a crit build, there, there's like 20 mods that are great for crit builds. But for a pure status build, you get to a point where there's not much left in, as far as good mods to put on your weapon. You know, you start looking at things like Serration, and it's like, oh, you know, it's like, uh, Serration's pretty crappy, you know? So, like, Rifle Elementalist doesn't have to compete with very good mods to be here. It's competing with things like Serration and Vigilante Armaments. Let me type in Vigilante Armaments here. It's competing with, like, Vigilante Armaments to be in that slot. And Vigilante Armaments, it's okay. It's 60% multi-shot. It's, it's an okay mod. But I did want to test it, right? Because, like... Maybe starting off, Vigilante Armaments just completely poops on Rifle Elementalist. And in that case, I'll just use Vigilante Armaments in my build. And I'll, I would just add like a little note. Hey, if you're doing level cap, use Rifle Elementalist. But I wanted to actually get the data for that. So uh, let me go out of here again. And we're going to pull up this data. You ready, guys? Here we go. Okay, Hema, kill counts, five minute runs, void mot, same thing, steel path. Uh, corrosive and heat for both builds, except in this test, I did three runs with Rifle Elementalist in that top right slot, and then I did three runs with Vigilante Armaments in that top right slot. So uh, I already said what we did with with the corrosive heat with Rifle Elementalist uh, on the previous um, uh, on the previous uh, slide that I brought up. So the corrosive heat with Vigilante Armaments, it got 395. 330 and 361 kills in three runs for a total of 1086. So we actually see that Vigilante Armaments scored pretty much the exact same as Rifle Elementalist. And Rifle Elementalist is going to scale better into the late game, like way better. Rifle Elementalist goes from kind of being meh to being really, really powerful, like super late in the game. 
Um, and because of that, I think the easy choice for that slot is Rifle Elementalist. If Vigilante Armaments had like completely pooped on it, I might have put it there, but but it didn't. It didn't. In fact, it did it did four kills worse. Again, very small difference. If I was to redo this, Vigilante Armaments might have beat it by a couple kills. But at the end of the day, Rifle Elementalist is still going to scale better. Okay, back to uh, regular gameplay here. So, yep, I think this is the min-max build for the Hema right here. Uh, is the Hema, like, the absolute best weapon in the game? Absolutely not. But, you know, we're doing all the uh, Steel Path viable weapons. So what we're going to do now is we're going to show this in 10 minutes of gameplay. I'm going to do this on a big dumb Anaros with no Archon Shards that increase weapon performance. No mods or Arcanes on the Anaros that increase weapon performance. And with a pet with no Sentinel weapon. And no mods on the pet that increase weapon performance. Alrighty, let's, uh, let's bring this Hema to work here. Let's see what I can get in 10 minutes. <laughs> hey, the, the Hema is a weapon you can get right from your dojo. So it's a it's a weapon that like it's pretty easy to get. Their rage is vehement, their focus impressive. So for a, a super easy to get weapon, um, for it to be steel path, steel path viable, even though it's not going to be as powerful as like some of the incarnates, or pretty much all the incarnates. <laughs> Right, we got to get our. We have to get our uh, conditionals up. So all right, we got we got most of our conditionals up here. We should be slaying pretty soon. Now, if you had a ribbon for this weapon, I would say put it over Rifle Elementalist unless you're intending to go, like, close to level cap. If you're intending to go close to or at level cap, you definitely want to keep Rifle Elementalist on. But if you don't intend to go close or or to level cap, then your ribbon would go over Rifle Elementalist. Does that make sense? I think it makes sense. Just because you don't get much value out of Rifle Elementalist until, like, until later in the game. So if you intend to go later, you want to keep it on because you will get a lot of value out of it. But if you don't, pop it off, put your ribbon there, and you should be good to go. Your ribbon should have um, multi-shot, status chance, and... I don't know, maybe some more heat to increase the heat weighting more. That might be good. Multi-shot, status chance, heat. That sounds like a pretty sexy uh, Hema ribbon. I know, of course, you can't you can't pick exactly what's on your uh, your ribbon, but in a perfect world where you could multi shot status chance and heat. So yesterday, um, if you're not from the U.S., uh, the reason I didn't have a video yesterday was because uh, we have Labor Day yesterday, which is like a, a holiday for us. And so I took it off because we were we were out hanging out with some friends. Pepper and, and two of her girlfriends, and we were just... Having a little barbecue, chilling. So this week we're planning to do a Sevagoth. Probably on Friday, I'll do a Sevagoth uh, Prime build. I have to actually uh, kick myself in the ass and actually farm for Sevagoth.
Remember, with weapons that are semi-automatic or burst, you can um, set your settings to shoot them as if they were automatic now. That's something that was added to the game uh, a, a couple months ago. It's in the accessibility. So if you go in your settings and you go to accessibility, uh, I, forgot, I forgot what the actual thing is called. It's somewhere near the top. You can shoot your uh, semi-automatic and burst weapons as if they were automatic, kind of. Like, um, you just hold down the button, basically. Oh, now let's got to roll and drop the mag bubble. This is not going to be very good against the Acolyte. It's going to be pretty average as far as uh, assault rifles go. Maybe even less than average because it's a, a status assault rifle instead of a crit assault rifle. So, average to below average against the uh, Acolyte. He's going to try to put that mag bubble on me again and try to get me to down myself. I have to kind of be aware of that. I thought he would have put it on me again by now. Maybe he's too far away. Let me get closer to him and try to... Yeah, there he is. Okay. I want to I want to bait him into putting it on me because I don't want to just randomly die. I'd rather know when it's on me. Alright, he's down. Yeah, so Sebagoth, uh at the end of the week. And then the other days of the week, um, I only at most will do one redo per week because I don't I don't want to have like the whole week uh, filled up with like weapons I've done already. So like at most we'll ever uh, have one one redo. So this will be our redo for this week. Um, I think the Soma Prime is going to be one of them. I want to do the Soma Prime as one of them. And the other day, I'm not really sure. I have a whole list here. I'll try. I'll try to hit up one of the things that, one of the suggestions that that has been waiting for the longest. I'll try to do for the, uh, the other one. Yeah, I think this weapon will get a, uh, a Lich or a Sister version, or whatever the, the infested dudes are going to be called. I feel like this is a perfect candidate for it. Cause it's a, I mean, it's a, it's a fun weapon, it's just that it needs a little bit of love. It needs a little bit of a stat increase, maybe some kind of unique effect. I don't know if they would give it a unique effect. Uh, well, I mean, I guess it technically has a unique effect, it's just a weird one that's not really... Super, uh... Not super necessary or needed. Even if you were playing a, uh... Like a, a health armor build, I don't feel like the... I mean, I guess the life seal is okay. I guess the life seal is pretty decent for a health armor build. But... Let me grab this one life support here. Usually on weaker weapons, you're going to see yourself a little bit starved on life support, and that's that'll be true for the Hema. It's not it's not uh, the most powerful weapon. I wouldn't say it's a weak weapon, but it's it's on the cusp. It's on the cusp of, from of being like below average and below average. It's like right in the middle there. Trespassers, only I, for know the true power of the void. 
is time. I will teach these trespassers the redemptive power of my Yamasaki. They will learn its simple truth. I've gotten really lucky. The last the last two uh, Warframes I did did not require any Umbral Forma, which I, I was I was happy about. And I was surprised. Um, I didn't know much about Frost before going into that video. And uh, I had assumed he was going to be an Umbral Forma dude. I'm like, oh, I'm going to be spending Umbrals on this dude. I'm going to have to run to this life support and then we're almost going to be at 10 minutes. That kind of sucks. Let's see if we can get our kill numbers up. Get back up there. We got like four, 20 seconds to get our kill numbers up. Come on, this thing's got to beat the Torrid. It's got to beat the Torrid and Karnan. We're probably so close. <laughs> 10 more seconds. I'm going to assume it's probably going to be like 600 kills. Alright, we're at 10. We're at 10. We're at 10. 631 kills. Let's check in a few seconds just to make sure no uh, heat procs killed anything else. Yeah, 631 still. Okay. Some of the good weapons in the game we've we've done uh, have hit about 900 kills, and some of the really good weapons we've done have hit about like 11, 1200 kills. So this is definitely like less than a good weapon. Again, probably more like on the average to maybe below average uh, rankings. But a good lich, a good lich candidate. Please make this into a lich weapon. Or an Incarnate. Imagine Incarnate Hema. Oh my goodness. Alright, so that was the that was the Hema. I uh, hope you guys liked it. If you liked the video, consider giving it a like. If you haven't subbed yet, consider subbing or tell me what I can do to earn your sub. And I hope you guys have an amazing day. Alright.